I get asked a lot, how am I so adept in Project Zomboids Combat? It's really not that hard. Hey, it's me, Jet, and this video should be every bit of information you should need to combat or be in combat in Project Zomboid. The basics. First off, your settings. Switch combat outlines to all so you can know which zombies you're aiming at. Turn auto ground attacks off and get used to using your left alt and mouse click for ground attacks as well. It is way more consistent and reliable. Stop running everything. Everywhere. You're gonna burn up your stamina way too quickly. Walk everywhere, it's the safest option, and zombies are much slower than you unless you've made them faster. The only time you should be running is when you're being chased by a horde of zombies, and in which you still should be walking up until there are zombies in front of you, making it harder for you to get past. If there is a gap closing in front of you of zombies, it's okay to run at that specific moment. Otherwise, don't waste your stamina. It's best to use your stamina in short bursts to get through things, away from things quickly, including hordes of zombies. You can run through them. It's just incredibly risky, but not holding down the shift button the entire time. Injuries. Injuries in your legs can and will slow you down. Deep wounds in your upper legs, scratches on your feet, broken legs also slow you down. However, crouching sometimes doesn't have those penalties. So in most cases, crouch walking is faster than limping around. So try crouching. Maybe your injuries aren't that bad. Injuries to your arms and hands can slow down your swing speed and make you do less damage. A good thing to note is that it's 100% your right arm and not your left arm, so if you get injuries in your left arm, feel free to ignore it except for the weapon switching speed. If you aren't aware, zombies always have a chance to infect you, a scratch being 7%, a laceration being 25%, and a bite being 100% chance to infect you and turn you into a zombie. The only way to really combat this is you just simply not get hit, dumbass. But the truth is, is that sometimes you are going to get injured, sometimes you are going to make mistakes, and that's okay. The best thing you can do is just play your best. Your character is a person. I know it's hard to imagine that given this game looks like it's straight off the PS1, but your character is a person. A person. Could you fight a horde of zombies at your best if you are one, injured, two, too hot, three, too cold, four, out of stamina, five, sleep deprived, six, carrying too much, seven, starving, eight, thirsty, nine, depressed. List goes on. I see so many new players dying when the top right hand side of their monitor looks like the final countdown timer on a bomb. How many more warnings do you need? To be fair, the devs could fix this and make this bigger and actually put some sounds to it, but you know, look at the top right hand side of your monitor. Take care of your character. Stop when you can to catch your breath, make sure you're well fed and watered, and get sleep plenty. If you're going into combat, drop your bag. You can always come back for it. It's not worth carrying a bunch of stuff if it's going to get you killed in the short term. Now, for the for the most part, combating the undead is mostly a war of attrition, killing them before you tire out and they kill you. This is why character building and maintenance is so important. After a long fight, make sure you find some time to sit down and rest. You can kill one horde, but two with zero rest is pushing it depending on the size of course. Zombies don't need breaks, you do. Make sure you take them when you get them. Keep your character well slept and rested. Let him catch his goddamn breath. Now, a super important part of combat is knowing what fights to take. Remember, you walk faster at base speed than a majority of zombies, and you can kite them somewhere and slip away. You don't need to kill them all. This isn't doom. Just the ones that specifically matter. The ones that matter are based on your situation. Large horde around a warehouse? Move them away. Large horde around your house should probably kill them before they destroy your defenses. I think that sums up the majority of basic concepts. There are three specific ways you can attack zombies. Weapon attacks, ground attacks, and pushing slash shoving them. Or if you count, shooting them. But why? why? Why would you do that? Why? 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 Fighting one zombie is simple. Push them over, curb stomp them. A good way to remember if they're dead is the same way I learned on the street. Don't stop until you hear the pop. Or just download combat text. It's a really good mod. Now, fighting two or more zombies to about a maximum of, I'd say, 10 is a simple roundabout of just pushing one onto the floor, damaging another one, and then pushing another one onto the floor until you've damaged them enough until you can rather curb stomp one of them or just kill them outright with weapon attacks. And then you just hit the gritty on their corpses. I'm kidding, this is a mod. But seriously, you should download it. Now, fighting hordes is different. You more or less just want to be walking away from the zombies as you're hitting them. It's basically, walk backwards and swing. It's as simple as it gets. And don't turn around as much as possible as that raises your chance of getting bitten. Up. Movement is very specific. You need to understand how your character moves. For a lot of veterans, this just becomes second nature. The basic premise is as simple as it gets. 
you're going to move backwards, hitting zombies as they get close to you, whilst keeping them at a distance so you can damage them, push them, and stun them out of attacking you. That is not the issue. If I told you all you really had to do to beat zombies in this game is walk backwards and hit them, you'd already think, damn, this game is easy. But it doesn't work like that all the time, does it? The hard part is eventually they're going to close the distance. The hard part in this game is understanding when to detach and when to reposition yourself to then rinse repeat and keep doing it until all of them are dead. Being too close will get you stun locked and killed. It's important to know the ranges of your attack for one-handed, two-handed, and push attacks. You more or less need to have a certain amount of distance and then you need to note down in your head how many hits on the zombies you can do before you need to run away again to then recenter yourself to rinse repeat. You basically want to keep the zombies in a stun lock while you're damaging zombies. Best way to envision it. You can tell the people who will survive way past their expiration date. They know when zombies are getting too close, when to break off to reposition, Reposition just means rounding around getting all the zombies, like literally just running in a circle and getting them in one group. So they aren't coming at you from multiple angles because at one angle it's much safer. You 100% need to keep them unified if you want to fight a horde as line of sight is incredibly important. A lot of things in the game affect how fast you move and swing as well, but this is something that you will need to adjust in the moment. Make sure you manage your inventory well, and if you're carrying a lot, take frequent breaks because if you don't get your stamina back up, you're not going to be ready to drop it all in fight. The first thing you want to do when you get into a horde fight is get them all into a group. Once they're all into a group, you know exactly where they are. When you know exactly where they are, they all can't hurt you because they're all in that one group. Next, look out for stragglers. They're a pain in the ass and they will get up. Don't always be in your combat stance because you move slower like that. Even as a burglar, you don't move fast enough. Now, once you've got them into a group like this, you have two options. You can rather take them away or you can kill them. I like to kill them because it's really not that bad. Now, without using any advanced techniques, I'm going to kill this horde real quick. And it's as simple as just turning around getting a swing in, running away, getting a swing in, running away. And then all you do is you just walk away like this, get some distance in because you're faster than them, swing, and then rinse repeat until the entire horde is dead. As you can see, I'm not panicking, I'm not worried, it's just a simple situation of slapping them and letting and hitting them when they can't hit me. And because I'm using a weapon that is a spear, which are broken by the way, I'm just insta-killing them every now and then, which is all you really need to do. Keep them in a group like this, because once they're in like this, you're in your safest. It also is mean you're at your most vulnerable, I will give you that. But the funny part about that is, is that as long as you don't let them grab you, you're kind of fine. Keep your stamina usage low, and you should be fine. If you see yourself getting too close to them, it is okay to like panic, run away, but I don't really think you need to most of the time. But in a situation where you're trapped in animation like I was just then, it's completely fine to run away at least a little bit. But just remember, the best thing to do is to conserve your stamina as much as possible. As you can see here, as I'm killing three in a row because I just hit a fat kill streak, we're doing good. Now two others are coming over, that's fine. Run through them, let them get gathered up into the rest of the group, and then you're completely fine. Now you gotta do is just hit some free insta kills real quick, because these ones are just far enough away that your nimble is letting you get a few hits in there, and you can then find these other three that are down here and gather them into the group. Sprinting there is the best option because it is the less chance of getting killed. Now, the main reason repositioning is so important is so that you're always staying in one specific spot when you're fighting. If I just went down the road that way, all I'm going to be doing is increasing this sword exponentially by the entire city's amount of zombies. And again, it's not like I want to take all of them somewhere or take them away. I'm here actively trying to fight for this location, aka the medical center right there. And as you can see, the horde starts to get thinner, and as the horde gets thinner, I'm free to just attack more and more and get more swings in. Every swing of a spear gives me another chance to just completely win the fight. Now as you can see, board fighting 101, simple and easy, not even hard. When a zombie is standing, you can't really hit anything other than just their entire body. It's a random number generator. On the floor, however, you can hit their legs, torso, and head. So make sure you're lining your character up with what you want to hit. The head. You, you want to hit the head. Now, let's say some get tipped over and you have a chance to curb something. And if you kill that zombie before the others can attack you, you're doing pretty good work. Especially the amount of momentum you're going to get from that. If you can stomp the zombie's brains in before they catch up with you, you're winning. If you can't, don't try. 
So in this situation, not killing that zombie on the floor can be silly. That doesn't mean always attempt killing the floor zombies. This can get you killed. They can grab at your ankles, they can push you over, and then that horde that was chasing you a second ago is now on top of you and you're dead. So learn the timings and learn the amount of distance it takes for zombies to travel. And always remember, curb stomping is king for not wasting durability, but using your weapons on the floor does waste durability, but it does a lot of damage. Sometimes it's better your weapon's durability than yours. Nighttime with darker nights is incredibly dangerous. If you cannot see well or can't see what you're fighting, just take a thought before attempting those things. Only takes risks you have to in this game, and that includes going into those woods right next to that horde, going out at night when all you can see is the green outlines. If you're looting a building, the safest thing to do is open and close doors quickly to see what's inside. If you're super worried, just open a window and whisper, and then they will come over. It's always safer to aggro them and then get jumped by them if if you don't know they're there. This is something that people in the real world also lack when it comes to fighting. Know your surroundings. Buildings and fences are all things you can use to combat the undead. A lot of people truly believe that without a good weapon and skill, you cannot kill zombies or larger hordes, but that cannot be further from the truth. Weapons make it easier, sure. It just makes the war of attrition more in your favor. Overall though, if there's a horde of 20, you can use a house like this to split them up and kill them one by one without even a weapon. You can also use fences and windows to get them to climb over and stomp their heads. However, this is incredibly risky and the best way to do this is one at a time and without any on their feet, as you will get stunned and it will end your run. So only go for this when all zombies are climbing over the fence, split them up as much as possible, and then proceed to stomp certain ones one by one. The best way to do this is to open a window and close it after a zombie or two climbs in. It won't last forever, however, as they can break windows too. Though, this should give you an idea of how you can use the world around you to your advantage. Use the windows, use the fences, use the doors, all of it to split them up. You can easily let a few zombies in, close the door, push zombie over, stomp its head, do it again, split some of them up by closing the door again, then leave the house, do the same thing, open the door, close the door, stamp on a zombie's head, you get what I'm trying to say. Now, to be specific, you don't need to do any of this. It just makes handing large hordes easier. It's pretty easy math that fighting one zombie is easier than fighting 10 all at once. So fighting one 10 times is much easier, isn't it? Last thing that will keep you alive longer, know when to ditch. Don't let your ego win, run if you need to. However, if you're really feeling overwhelmed, it would be great if you understand how the undead think, which leads me to. Understanding how the undead work is paramount to your survival in this game. The zombies in this game may be stupid, but they aren't as simple as you'd believe. For instance, a real zombie would probably just see you and come at you slowly, slash fast, and probably just claw at you from behind a window. But the zombies in Project Zomboid for some reason have the ability to break down doors and windows to name only a few things. Which sounds like it sucks until you realize you can take advantage of this. See, their AI is very simple. Get close enough to a door or a window, they'll get distracted and start attacking it. So if you're in a chase, get your ass close to walls of buildings and windows so the zombies will follow the path and start attacking the doors and windows. This is an amazing way to lose them or split up zombies. Not to mention, you can go inside a building, close the door, and they'll start attacking it. Just go out the back window and then flank them. Or run away. It's up to you. Quick suggestion though, if you are running close to buildings, just remember zombies like to hide around corners. Just, just make sure you detach right at the edge. <laughs> Now, how does a zombie track, see, and hear you? Whether or not they can see you is pure RNG, which is why inconspicuous is not a great perk for its point cost. However, hearing you is always consistent, which is why graceful is worth the cost, and why burglar is such a strong profession. Zombies do what is called spotting checks. If you get spotted, the zombie will pursue you until they die or lose you. Now, this doesn't mean you get spotted just run in a straight line far enough and they'll stop following you. They will chase you until the ends of the earth, especially as the zombies have wool hack. There's a more in-depth approach to this in this video here by Retinaru. Watch that video if you want the most detailed breakdown of this. For a simple breakdown to explain it, run away from the zombies, break line of sight, and once you have broken line of sight, stand still for a second so their pathing locks onto where you are at that exact moment. Then, move to a place that breaks line of sight from that location. After which you can sneak away scot-free as long as you don't get spotted again. Keep in mind, in most cases, if you don't go on the exact edge of a building, zombies will decide to go through the building via destroying windows and doors, even if it's a majority slower. This is why using your environment is so strong, because avoiding zombies isn't hard at all, it's just understanding them. I could go into some more depth about the undead, but for the most part, that's all you really need to understand. This game is the definition of easy learn and hard to master. Now you understand how zombies work, 
Fun fact, did you know you can clear entire towns without even needing to fight any zombies? You can simply enter a town, begin yelling and attracting all the zombies in a radius, grab a huge horde of them, and take them out of the city by walking with them. Now, this is a bit difficult for beginners, but it is completely doable. Take them outside of the city, make sure you take them to a spot you remember because you don't want to go back there later, and use the knowledge you've learned to escape them in the trees. After which you can return to the same spot, grab the second wave of the zombies by yelling again, and attracting the zombies left behind, who are all like behind doors and in buildings, who break out of all the stores, and then find a new spot and escape them again. Now the city areas you chose should be completely clear and ready for looting. Lastly, thinning. When hordes get too large, this probably really shouldn't happen unless you're playing on specifically CDDA, they almost become unbeatable. The best thing to do in this situation is approach quietly and stay crouched. Whisper silently and whisper slash silently shout at them to get some of the zombies' attentions, but not all of them. Then you let them come to you from a distance and you grab a few of them and proceed to kill them until the horde is at least a level you can manage. Hey, you've made it to the middle point of the video. This video took 10 months to make, so you are now legally required to hit the subscribe button, leave a like on the video and then leave a comment on the video telling me how amazing I am for putting all this information in one place for you. It would just be nice to get some dopamine and feel something for once. Builds. The traits in this game will 100% make or break the difference between you and surviving and dying. Being a traitless character sucks, don't do that. Most people, when they first start, look at this entire list of perks, good and bad, and just go, nah. And I don't blame them. Heck, even I did. But trust me when I say, you're useless. But if I want positive traits, I need to take negative traits. Yes, you do, but a lot of those are beneficial and you don't even notice them. Or, it's just new creative ways of playing the game. Some legitimately don't even do anything and it won't change much at all. The best combat orientated traits are as follows. Wakeful. Wakeful makes you able to perform at your best for longer as you require less sleep and can function with less sleep for longer. It's important and amazing. Take it. Keen hearing. Take this perk. You can see zombies coming up behind you. Fighting hordes without that is painful and makes a difference. That means you don't have to rely on one sense. If you're someone who isn't just constantly aware of everything going on around you, it's nice to have. Athletic and fit. These perks are the most important part of your build. Fitness makes you a missile waiting for its target. It makes it so you can keep fighting, recover quickly, and it also increases your chance to block attacks from the undead. Strength also does that. If you max both, you get about 40% chance to block. Fitness is way more important than strength. It lowers how quickly you feel tired and increases your attack speed. So if you're using weapons that, that roll insta-kills like spears, more hits for less damage isn't as bad as slower hits for more damage. Leveling your fitness by default takes forever and you should 100% be picking either of these perks for your build. Strong and stout is important, but personally I'd rather put those points into other things so I can survive longer as yes, this does increase your chance to block, carrying capacity, melee damage, and your pushdown multiplier. But all of this really only helps at level 10 compared to 6 or 8. The percentile differences just aren't super huge between those numbers. So in my eyes, unless you're going into full combat, it just isn't really super essential. As on longer playthroughs, you have plenty of time to do push-ups, just make sure you're eating enough protein. Yes, that's a mechanic. If you don't get enough protein, then you just don't really get a lot from exercising. Make sure you're not taking any traits that reduce your strength. 5 is more than enough at the start, but if you're going less, you're really not going to have a good time. Gymnast. Nimble is a skill that really can't be overlooked. It's incredibly slept on even though this skill is godly. Nimble affects how fast you move with your weapon up, e.g. in a combat stance. The difference between life and death in horde fights is what will save your life in the long run. This alone is why burglar is the strongest profession. Some people believe it isn't. Those people are wrong. Obviously, this decision is subjective, and you believe what you want, however, give any new person this profession, and they will survive longer. Why? 1. Nimble. In a combat stance, you can just move faster, and it's nuts. This means you can kite and fight more effectively. 2. Light-footed. E.g. being able to keep zombies unalerted so you can get away from and engage less. The ultimate reason is hot wiring unlocked from day one. This is on its own completely crack. Lastly, your locks break less on windows. It's a cherry on top, it doesn't really matter. Why is this so good? You are heard less, you can move faster in combat, and worst case, you can use a car as a weapon. Not that you should do that. If you're going to, make sure you run over zombies with the back of your car and not the front so it lasts longer, because if you run them with the front of your car, it damages the engine over time. But it's an option. No other professions have such a leg up on the burglar. 
It doesn't mean you shouldn't play them, it just means that if you're playing on hard mode, a burglar is the min-maxed meta option. Are the other professions good? Of course, to say they don't have their uses would be wrong, and to say they're bad is also just wrong. Firefighter, veteran, park ranger, fitness instructor all have their benefits, but none have the almighty fight and flight tactic called car from day one. It's just very broken that burglar gets so much and other professions just don't. Fitness instructor, park ranger, and firefighter, among others, are really, really good. Their stats increases are really nice. Policeman and veteran being perfect for gun usage. However, burglar's natural abilities is just too strong to overlook. I always click burglar just because burglar is insane. Cat eyes is amazing if you're playing on the pitch black setting. Dexterous is insane and always should be taken because it allows the ability to loot near zombies. Fast reader is pointless because you can just speed up time. Outdoorsman used to be really really good because it stopped you from getting sick. I still think it's worth it because you combo this with prone to illness and you're still really good. So I always take Outdoorsman anyway because it's basically a free two points. Wakeful always is one of the best ones to take because it's insane. Iron Gut isn't really useful, just don't eat any burnt foods or off foods and you'll be fine. Angler is a basic stat increase, not really worth it, same with Baseball Player. Same with Brave, getting panic doesn't really do anything to you except for, well, maybe lower your accuracy, but that doesn't really kill you in a fight. First Aider is not worth taking. Graceful is really good and it actually lowers the chance of a zombie hearing you by about 50%. Inconspicuous is worse in almost every single way and completely revolves around RNG. The Light Eater is a good choice, I personally don't ever take this. If you take this with underweight, you just end up not being able to eat enough to increase your weight. Lucky. Lucky is incredibly good, I don't think it's worth it. It only increases your chance to find good weapons by 10%. 10% is not a big enough number. Nutritionist is actually really nuts and will actually show you the amount of calories in foods. Helps a lot. Resilient, if you have outdoorsman, you're probably fine as it is. And if you just don't go out in the rain with nothing on or just chill in the cold all day, you really don't need this. Not to mention a slow rate of zombification doesn't do anything, you're still going to die if you get bitten. Amateur Mechanic is actually one of the ones worth taking, and I normally do take it if I have the extra points. Gymnast is also insane because it basically just buffs Burglar, and gives you an extra one in Lightfooted and Nimble. Eagle Eye is completely fine, but I wouldn't take it. Fast Healer isn't really worth it because it doesn't really affect anything. If you have Slow Healer, you just chill inside anyway when you get injured, so again it's kind of pointless. Fast Learner is always worth taking because it just increases your EXP that you get overall. Fit or Athletic is completely up to you. I always prefer to go for Athletic because it will keep me alive longer. Former Scout's up to you. Herbalist is really nice. I like taking it and the only reason is is so I can know right from the start of the game if things are poisonous or not. However, depending on how many books are available in your world, this is completely pointless because if you can go and find a book or go to a library quickly enough, you really don't have to get Herbalist. You can just read a book and get the exact same thing. You just need to find the Herbology book, I guess. Yeah, that works. Keen Hearing, this is insane. If you really don't want to pay attention and just know when zombies are coming behind you, that is really, really good. Low Thirst, up to you. I don't think it's worth it. You can just keep up like multiple bottles of water on you. Organized, insane. This gives you like an extra five or something in carrying, not just on you, but in everything. Stout is completely up to you. Adrenaline Junkie is now pointless unless you have a mod that lets you stack panic and just keep being panicked. I normally play with those because I don't like that they remove the effect. Candy, completely up to you. You can level up your carpentry really quick though just by having a carpentry level one book and just watching the TV in the first few days. Hunter, eh, literally eh. Thick Skin is completely up to you. The problem that Thick Skin has is it's in a situation where yes, it will give you less chances of scratches or bites breaking the skin, which is really, really nice. The other downside though, however, is that it's a whole eight points and legitimately it does not even put into the calculation what you are wearing. So if you're wearing a bunch of clothes that protect you from bites, if a zombie bites you and if it goes through all that clothing, it's only ever going to roll as if that clothing didn't exist. And I personally always think that's worth it because worst case scenario, you roll it and now you just don't get bitten. Getting bitten can completely ruin a run if you do not have the mods to get away from being infected. I personally like it, but hate it. It's not really worth running ever. However, it's completely up to you. It's another eight point. 
or negative traits. Cowardly literally does nothing. Might as well take it. Short-sighted also does nothing. Slow reader does nothing. Just speed up the time. Weak stomach does nothing. Just don't eat burnt or rotten foods. Agrophobic or claustrophobic. Claustrophobic is completely fine because arguably if you're panicked indoors, it's not that big of a deal. Because the downside of claustrophobic is that you can't sleep when panicked, but that's not a huge deal because all you have to do is open the sleep menu and then just speed up time whilst in the menu and click yes while you no longer have the panic. Conspicuous, don't take this. It makes you more likely to be seen. Hearty appetite, if you really need it. I always take pacifist. You might not want to take this, but it doesn't actually make you less effective in terms of doing less damage. It's legitimately just, hey, I just get wet less weapon XP. But with fast learner, you even out anyway. So you're really just getting a free two points there. Prone to illness, you can take this, especially if you have outdoorsman. Smoker, it's literally one of the best things to take. 100% one of the best things to take because it's just free points. Unlucky, it's a 10% minus chance to not get weapons. It's the only thing it affects. Other people think, oh man, I have the unlucky trade on and I got every single alarm ever. It doesn't work like that. Stop thinking it works like that. Asthmatic, don't take this. It's terrible. Fear of blood, that's fine. The only time that's ever bad is if you're on service. High thirst, that's completely up to you. I normally take it just because it's kind of free points. Slow healer, completely fine in my eyes because all it really does is it increases the amount of time it takes to heal. But the reality is that if you're super injured anyway, you shouldn't be going out in hordes of zombies. Just heal off your wounds and then go out. So it doesn't really change anything about the gameplay, it just extends it by a couple days. Underweight. You can rather take this or incredibly underweight, the problem being is that if you have athletic, you can't take that. So I personally just go for regular underweight because it's an extra six points. Now all you need is an extra three. Wow, it's crazy how quickly you can actually build this stuff up. I personally go for claustrophobic because now I have one point and we're chilling. Now, if I really, really, really wanted to take something like Stout, just so I can get some extra carry weight, get some extra damage in, I could, because all I really need to do is take something worth five. And there's plenty here. I could take Hardy Appetite. I could even take Restless Sleep. I don't think you should do that. If, it's, if you're on a multiplayer server, you can take it because it doesn't affect anything. I'd probably go High Thirst and then Stout. Just because High Thirst doesn't really affect anything anyway, and you're probably going to have water around you at all times. All you really need to do is just remember to drink more water. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't affect gameplay that way. The build I have made in like two seconds would probably keep me alive for a while. I thirst, slow healer, underweight, fear of blood, claustrophobic, which again, you can play around completely, pacifist, prone to illness, smoker, unlucky, weak stomach, cowardly, short-sighted, slow reader, burglar, dexterous, outdoorsman, wakeful, gymnast, fast learner, keen hearing, organized, stout, and athletic. Now, hear me out. You could remove Gymnast because if you think it does nothing, then fair enough, it does nothing. I personally like it because an extra point in like put and nimble, is pretty cracked, especially from the start of the game, when every little bit helps. When you don't have the best weapons, where you're doing little bits of damage and going in there. Now, this is a combat oriented build. You could take out Gymnast and maybe even a couple other ones, and you'd be fine. You could take out Organized and Gymnast and just go for Gardener or Carpenters. Along those lines, it depends on how much you or what the intent of your playthrough is. I always just pick all of this because it keeps me alive the longest, and if I'm staying alive longer, then the reality is is that I can learn whatever I need to learn later on. There are a litany of weapons in Project Zomboid. However, some are obviously better than others. You can't kill an entire giant ass horde with just a rolling pin. The power of friendship ain't getting you through this one, Chief. Is it possible? 100%. You can kill hordes with anything in this game. It's just, trust me, it's going to take a while. And you will need a lot of stamina to do basically no damage the entire horde fight. The best weapons, in my opinion, I do have some facts to back this up, are spears, bladed weapons, axes, and bats. They seem to be just kinda nuts. If you get your hands on a wooden spear, which you can make with a knife and any tree branch plank, it's really insane. If you can get your hands on a machete, that's really insane. If you can get the katana, that's really insane. If you can get a baseball bat and put some spikes in it, it's decent enough and will sorta of tide you over. Axes are really good, however, I never use them because it's a tool. It's like using a hammer, it just feels wrong because I want to save the durability for crafting. Why is it like this? Well, spears have an insta-kill mechanic, which is why they're the best weapon in the game. Randomly, when you hit a zombie, you just have a chance to roll something that just immediately kills a zombie. Of course, that's going to be the best thing in the game because you can be tired and they still just die. The only downside to spears specifically is that crafted spears are a major pain in the ass. They do insta-kill zombies, but the only real problem with that is that they break really quickly until you've leveled up your maintenance stack. So, the only issue with this is, is that if you want to fight a really giant horde of 50 plus zombies, you're going to need at least like 10 to 20 spears in your backpack. And you're going to equip them mid-combat. 
Does that matter? No, because it really doesn't take much to just multitask and grab a spear out of your backpack. The only other options are modded spears or spears that you attach little weapons to with knives and machetes, the machete spear being insane, or the best weapon in the game, the Garden Fork, which is a spear that just doesn't break for ages and still insta-kills. The Katana is almost the best weapon in the game of Project Zomboid. It is really good, does an incredible amount of damage, and has a lot of durability. But it has two downsides. You cannot repair it, and it's never a guaranteed spawn like Spears and the Garden Fork. But if you get one or modded one in, or have a way to craft them, obviously use it. It's great until it breaks. Machetes are really good because they just do high damage, every now and then they roll an insta-kill. Axes are really good because they do decent damage, however they do cost a lot of exhaustion. Bats are really good because they do somewhat decent damage and that's kinda it. <laughs> Lastly, guns. I would advise against using these until you're specifically experienced with the game enough to understand that everything is going to be running at you from any direction ever. Every zombie in a good 10 mile radius is gonna want you and want to eat you. So just be aware, to use guns in this game, you will need to know how to use them and when to use them. Heck, I don't even know how to use them still. That's why I just don't. Because I know when I use them, it's probably a death sentence unless I just run the heck away from when I shot the gun. There's also the sad reality that in the base game, aiming is a stat that you need to level up. You can't just shoot things in the head from the start of the game unless you're using a mod like Advanced Trajectory, which I 100% suggest because it's really, really good and you can just have a crosshair on screen. I would go more into depth on this, but the reality is that all you need to survive in this game is a knife and plenty of ways to get planks and tree branches. You can forage for tree branches, so by all means, if you're carrying eight spears on you everywhere you go, every single horde should be like the Holy Excalibur given to you by God himself cutting through butter. It's heavily unlikely that I included everything in this video. So if you have some knowledge you'd like to share, do me a favor and comment it down below so we can create a library of information for new players and old players to make use of. If you'd like to hit the subscribe button and like the video, I'd really appreciate that. This video took a long time to make and it was a major pain in the ass, so it would make up for that. My name is Jet, and I create content that I'm passionate about, whether it gets a lot of attention or not. My content is mainly based around entertainment and variety, if that's something you like. I do make a lot of Can You Beats and Project Zomboid challenges, though. I upload every single Saturday EST. I also don't mind if you're completely uninterested in anything that I've said right now. But it would be nice to uh, get a few comments and stuff like that so the video does better. I hope you at least made use of this video. Stay safe. Peace.